Hey guys, hello, hello, Natalie Cutler Welsh here. Welcome back to another episode of the Impact Entrepreneur series. I'm super excited to have Anne Cullen with me. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Hi, Anne. It's so great to have you here because today we're going to be talking about, yes, mental health and happiness, which is our focus at the moment. And there's so many people that have approached me. I'm, I'm overwhelmed and excited about so many amazing people I get to connect with and, and interview and talk to about this because it's massive. And I'm excited to talk to Anne because she's done so much research and has so much knowledge in the area. And particularly today's topic, new beginnings and how the first 1000 days of life can really impact your health and happiness. So exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also healing your childhood. So this is the kind of stuff we're gonna dive in today. Mm -hmm. And can you please kick us off and let me know, let all of us know a little mm -hmm. bit about you know what you're working on at the moment and how did life lead you to this place? Yeah, thanks Natalie. It's actually so exciting to be here. Um, I could talk, talk about this topic for a very, very long time. It really is my obsession and my passion. And um, so right now I am, part of a program that's actually called New Beginnings, and it's going to be really launched into the world. Um, its first public appearance is happening in June, and then we're really going big in September. And in fact, we're even collaborating on a book um, because this is such an important topic. And I guess, honestly, it's my own life. I think for a lot of us, our passions and the work we do um, comes from our own life. And for me, that's completely 100% true. Um, I did not have an ideal upbringing, um, love my parents, um, but I think even they would agree that, that things could have been a lot better in our home, in my life growing up. And, you know, I, I literally decided at the age of seven, when my little brother was born, that I was put on the planet to make the world a better place for children. To, I want them to grow up feeling safe and secure and understood. And the cool thing is, that you know that came from my heart but now the science and all the research is showing us that this is exactly what we do need to do we do need to make sure that children start in those first thousand days which natalie is from conception to about the age of three so it's not mm. necessarily from birth but it's about it's in about that category of time it impacts the whole rest of our lives so it is the most essential thing um, and so my passion will never subside. <laughs> um, and the more I read, the more excited I get about the journey that I'm on. I know that is so cool. And I think some people will be sitting there watching our zoom call, watching our Facebook live. Hi, you guys. And thinking, well, for at least me, my youngest is eight. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm quickly going through a few scenes going, yep, 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 it was good. Um, so I guess as parents, we feel like, oh my gosh, you know, did I give them a good start in those first thousand days? Some people might even go, nobody told me about the thousand days, you know, like, of course, I think I did a good job. But if I'd known it was so crucial, I would have, I would have, you know, focused on making it better. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And I guess the other thing is, all is not lost because healing your childhood, which we'll dive into next, can be done. So can you start off with the, yeah. the parents like me who I've got like a 12 year old, 10 year old, eight year old, and I'm going, oh my gosh, did I do a good job? And I really didn't know about the thousand days, but <laughs> I don't know how much that would change things. It probably would have actually. What do you thought? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually really glad that you asked that question, Natalie, because the other exciting thing we know is that our brain is developing for a very long time. Um, none of us have a mature brain before the age of 18. So you really do at least have your child's entire childhood to be um, helping them to create that foundation for a successful you know, future life in their adulthood. It's never too late. The, the thing that we know is just that those first thousand days that there's so much more happening in that time than any other time in our life. I mean, if you think about it, the moment you're conceived, you go from one cell to, I think it's a trillion cells when you're born. You know, that's a lot of growth. And, you know, in, in, in those first three years, there's 700 synapses a second firing up in our brains. Um, it, that's never replicated again as you get older. It's still happening. It's just starting to slow down. And, you know, they have this saying that, you know, what 
um, fires together, wires together. So the more those things are firing, the more we're wiring up what we want. And so, yeah, that's really an important time. If we can get that right, then it makes the rest of the journey so much easier. Um, but if we got it wrong, or if there was a trauma, I mean, if, if you were a baby born in Christchurch when the earthquake happened, um, you know, that's like my baby trauma. Exactly. That's just unavoidable trauma. Um, yeah. So it's not even about just our choices. It's just about life and how life happens. Um, but we can, we can help our children have that resilience in um, really those secure attachments with us at any point. We just hope to get it all in the early days. Yeah. Okay. So what if we are a mom or dad and the kid, the child is within those thousand days and it might even be second baby, you know, you think, Oh, now I know this. I'm really going to, what, what does that look like? Like, is that, you know, just providing joy and education through nature and, and you know, play and stuff. I mean, I've got, as you guys probably know, I've got like tons of Lego behind me on the floor. <laughs> um, you know, what is that? If we were to design the, the first a thousand days and it was like to be the ideal, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. You know, what's really cool is it's actually very simple. All we need to do. And this is kind of a, you know, it sounds simple and yet it's maybe not so simple. And that's what we can get into next maybe is what we all we need to do is just tune in to our baby that's it we have to tune into our babies we have to let them know that we're there for them we respond to them so of course in pregnancy um, that's a little bit different so that's about maintaining our own um, well-being and our own anxiety levels because you then are giving the message to that growing fetus life is good here I'm ready for you, I'm prepared, you're safe in there, and you're gonna be safe to come out. So it's really about your nutrition and your, your emotional well-being, and having everyone treat you like the queen that you are while you're pregnant. So that's what you do during pregnancy, that's, that's the bulk of it. And then once baby comes in that first three years, you're responding to it the best you can, as often as you can. So it doesn't mean your baby will never cry or they're gonna be damaged for life. I mean, it's just, that's not possible, right? Um, we've been mums, we know. The, but you can be doing the best you possibly can, but it's almost like you've birthed this little alien being that is trying its best to communicate with you and you're trying your best to communicate back. So it's like that dance, I'm trying to figure you out, but we're new to this, we're building this relationship. So it's that responsiveness, that just tuning in, I'm trying to meet your needs, I'm honestly doing the best I can. And that's really what it's all about. So, you know, our genetics do have something to do with um, how things turn out for us and how we are. Um, but really the strongest thing is relationship. Nothing actually matters more than relationship. And when it comes down to it in those first thousand days, it's the relationship with one person, usually mum. You know, we're the ones that carry the baby. We're the ones that, you know, have the ability to breastfeed the baby. Um, so it's really about that baby being attuned to us as, as mum. That's good. I was trying to anticipate what you were going to say. It's not what I was thinking. I was thinking that you were going to say, it's so simple, just enjoy it. You know, like, you know, just enjoy the experience. But I think tuning in, tuning in is, part, is definitely part of that. Um, yeah, I mean, it is one of the things that I, the reason I wrote my book is because parenting, motherhood, was so much harder than I thought it would be. And mm -hmm. I didn't have postnatal depression. I, I had a helpful husband. I lived in a safe country. You know, like I had all the things yeah. going for me. Uh, I'm very energetic. I had no problem breastfeeding, like whatever. Right. But yeah. I still found it really hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think those thousand days, it's like, we do want to make sure that we are as much as possible. I think enjoying it ourselves. Mm -hmm. I know that my first and second baby was very different experience same. in terms of work because I was like, yeah, I'll just take two or three months off and then I'll go back to work. That's like, that's literally what I was thinking for babies. <laughs> so when my boss was like asking me, Oh, do you have that report due? And Oh, like, can we, how much is, you know, how is your baby going? And she was sleeping three times a day. Like she was napping a lot. Yeah. So I was like, this is the worst thing I ever did. 
yeah, no problem. Like send me through some work and boom, my paternity leave was gone. You know, after even only, I don't even know, it was, mm. might've been six weeks or eight weeks. I, because I, I said yes. Whereas the baby number two, I was like, don't call me, don't email me. I'm taking a year off. <laughs> yes. I'm like, how can people take a whole year off? Like, that's crazy. Yes. We're totally different. Right. But I think for me, <laughs> excuse me, I did tune in and I did enjoy it, but I also spent a lot of time mm, like frustrated, like yeah. Yeah. because of wanting to get things done, which is partly, I think, human nature and partly my personality type. So I guess my little message for all the moms and dads out there is really be aware of your natural personality type. And some people, like I would feed the baby, put the baby down and go and do dishes or go and clean or go and do something rather than just enjoying and really mm -hmm. just present. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wasn't good at. And that would have changed yeah. a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you know, that's why I've called my business connection centered parenting is really because it's that reminder that it's all about connection. It's connecting to your baby. Um, but it's also about connecting back to yourself. Like you've just pointed out, we have to recognize what we're bringing to the table and it's not just about our baby. Um, we need to turn into them and see what they're bringing to the table. And, you know, as soon as you have more than one child, you can really see it more clearly. I think the second time around, like, oh, this is what the baby is like. It's not just about me and, and like what I'm doing. Um, you know, if you have a baby that's crying a lot, a lot of times you can blame yourself. Um, but it might just be, you've got a really sensitive baby and you're not necessarily doing anything wrong. Um, and, and you kind of see that as you parent more than one child. So I think that's the biggest gift to having more than one is you can really recognize, you know, they're bringing something to the table, but you are as well. And you know, what happens to us, interestingly, is whatever was wired up for us. So now if you go back, Natalie, and think about your first thousand days of life, what was wired up for you? And I'm not necessarily saying answer this, but what was wired up for you in that time? Because that has sent you on a trajectory through the rest of your life. And what you brought to the table genetically and like, you know, your predispositions and your personality would have dictated how, how your mom or anyone around you responded to you. So if you were that baby that just smiled and looked so adorable, then guess what? you're met with smiles and, oh, look at this lovely, lovely baby. And that. But if you have a child who cries all the time, you know, they're going to have a slightly different interaction. So you see, we're, we're kind of, we take what we're given and then it's just strengthened through those, those interactions. And, and they really do strengthen in the, in the beginning. Um, so this is what the New Beginnings program is about and, and where my, you know, I, I love supporting parents on the practical side of things. I'm a lactation consultant, so obsessed about breastfeeding and helping people with that. Um, babies that are crying, um, love to help with toddler tantrums and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, what I really know is we need to consider how we are as parents and how, um, how our first thousand days of life is now impacting our parenting. I'm gonna have to quiz my mom about the, the first thousand. <laughs> yeah. I know that we were like in a small apartment in a high rise in, in Toronto, in Canada, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, interesting. Yeah, that's, that, is, that is amazing. And I think people do, some people do want those nuts and bolts, like the lactation and the sleep and the stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think focusing on connection is, is awesome. Can you can we dive into the, um, I want to take it to that next level of, of healing your childhood, which I know is something that you feel so strongly about. And it's, I think, something that you help people with. I'm not sure. Maybe you can elaborate. But I do, in my journey as an entrepreneur and working with you know, thousands of moms and entrepreneurs, I have come across a lot of people that have had a rough road. I had a great childhood. So I don't know, probably some opposite, you know, quite opposite to yours. I don't know the details. Yeah. Um, and I've had a couple challenges thrown in the way, like the earthquake and, mm -hmm. and my son losing his hair and, and mm -hmm. things like that. I've had challenges, but I really had a brilliant, easy, lovely, lovely, loving childhood. But a lot of my friends didn't, right? So, mm -hmm. and like we said before, all is not lost. But I feel like some people, and this is a very entrepreneurial phrase, are stuck in their story, right? Where they're just like, their past kind of dictates their future and they, they can't, they seem to be learning the same lesson over and over and attracting the same kind of wrong people or whatever into their life. So mm -hmm. I'm super 
excited. And this is not something that I know how to help people with. I help people when they're, they're they've got their so story sorted and they're ready to shine. Right. But I know people like you can help them to yeah. heal their childhood. So can we chat about that? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really, it's really the next level. And it's really sometimes the last thing that we want to focus on because isn't it easier to just focus on everybody else and what they're all doing wrong or what they need to work on. And, you know, to, to, it takes a strong person to say, you know what, um, actually I'm responsible for my life. I'm responsible for what I'm creating here. Um, so maybe I need to step back and take a look at me and what I'm doing. And um, so I think it takes a sense of bravery and, and a sense of adventure. Like I love exploring when something comes up for me, um, kind of, hmm, I wonder where this came from. I wonder where this is, what is this trying to tell me here? So, you know, everything that's happened to us has happened for a reason. It's all here to tell us something. It's all part of the journey and it's great. Um, and like I, like I said, you know, we, we had things, um, the, the interesting thing about the first thousand days, of course, is that you don't really have what we would call a conscious memory of that time. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, people thought it didn't matter and only what we can remember actually matters. But um, I'm reading this fabulous book. Can I just plug this amazing book? The Body Keeps yeah. Score. Um, whatever happened, and we're only learning more and more and more, you know, about this stuff, but whatever has happened, it stays with you. It is with you for good. Um, somewhere in your brain, in your body, that experience is being remembered. So um, when we go more into the subconscious part of the brain, um, we're bringing up all of that stuff that happened in those first three years, those first thousand days. Um, and sometimes, you know, we really kind of dissociate from what's happened. Um, now, that's not to sound weird, but, you know, it's kind of like if you, you're driving your car, you can remember what it was like when you first started driving and it was really hard. And it was like, okay, what do I need to remember? And now you can just get in your car and you drive and it's not so bad until, you know, maybe you have to slam on your brakes and then you kind of wake up for a minute. But that's <laughs> an association process happening in your brain. Because if you had to keep track of everything all the time, you'd really go crazy and never get anything done, right? So that's, that's kind of what happens. So our subconscious brain is keeping track of most things for us. So the method I use called MAP, or Manifesting All Possibilities, is um, really tapping into what we know about the subconscious parts of our brain it's really tapping into that and the fantastic thing is we've learned that people that go through like talk therapies and really they start to rehash it and feel mm -hmm. it all again so strongly and that it's actually like they're being traumatized again and again in in this book there's so many studies where you know now we can hook people up and see what's going on in their brains and bodies. And we see that just thinking about that event brings up that feeling of trauma again. So we, we don't want to keep rehashing and rehashing. We just need to feel that part of the brain. We need to calm it down. Um, and you know, there's lots of different techniques. I find um, MAP is the best, which is why I certified um, using it, because um, it's worked for me. But um, yeah, some of our more traditional things haven't really been working. And if they had been working, I don't think we'd be in the state, you know, of affairs that we are now. Yeah, I'm really happy you said that because I don't know much about the science or research behind it. But for me, talk therapy, as you call it, mm. I think it just like you're on a re, re, you know, taking yourself back there, reliving it. Yeah. And unless yeah. you're actively changing the story or the mindset around it, like if you're just explaining it to someone, it's just, it's just deepening it's just it in your memory. Yeah. So yeah. what does MAP then? What, hey, Amy, good to see you on the Facebook Live. What does MAP look like? Like, what is that? Yeah. It's not talk therapy. How does it work? Yeah, it's really cool because it, it literally taps into the subconscious. So, so you're, you're reminded, your, your practitioner that you're working with, it can be done one-on-one -on -one or in groups. And actually, I can do it on myself because I have been, um, a little, you know, you don't have to be too experienced. You can start to do it for yourself, which is something you can't do with talk therapies. Um, but really what you do is you just start bringing up conscious memories and your practitioner kind of guides you intuitively through that. And when you have feelings that come up, we actually give instructions to your superconscious. And um, 
it's basically, yeah, there's something called, I'm kind of going around here, but I don't want to get too technical about it, but there's something we found out in the year 2000 called the window of reconsolidation, where we thought before that those synapses, once they were kind of stuck together, they were there. But we found that when you have that feeling, you just for one moment, those synapses actually separate for a minute and then they can go somewhere else. So if you are constantly going trauma, 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 and those are constantly going back together, um, you're not getting anywhere, which mm. is probably what's happening in most traditional therapies. But what we do- And is a lot that, of people on that spend a lot of time and a lot of dollars, right, on that. So much, and I've done it, I've done it. So I know the difference, <laughs> I, know, I know the difference. And so, you know, that's basically what you're doing is you're just, you might be changing the story a little bit as you go, but pretty much you just keep bringing up the same feelings and the same thing. Well, this is bring up the feeling and now we're going to, we're going to go somewhere else with this. So you're not going to forget that memory. Um, if it's a conscious memory, um, sometimes it's not, you're not going to forget that. Um, it's not going to go anywhere, but you're not going to have that emotion attached to it that you keep rehashing and rehashing. Um, so it's really, really gentle, but the, the brilliance of the New Beginnings program um, is that you, you do that side of things, um, kind of what I call the rewiring, but there's more to it. We also know that you need to rewrite your story. So you, you can't just, it's not really going to be solidified if you just can relax the emotions around something. You have to actually um go into more of a state of imagination and dream like state and imagine what it would be like if and then we really do rewrite a new childhood so the new beginnings program goes from conception to 18 even though you know the beginning is the most important um like say our brain is changeable at least for those first first 18 years um, and beyond, you know, but it's getting more and more solidified over those years. And so we go through it systematically. Um, but this was the piece that was missing. And Colette Stryker, who developed the New Beginnings program and the map method that I use, uh, is such a genius. And that's the piece that I think is missing in so many things is like, okay, well, now I've done this, but, but now what? Like, now what? What do I do with this? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think she's covered it all, really. That is very cool. So, uh, and is that something that works? I imagine it's fine online on Zoom. Like you, you could help oh, me yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and then also in person, because where are you based? Oh, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good point. I'm in New Plymouth, New Zealand, but um, yeah, that's the beauty of the internet. And this system works so perfectly um, with people. I, I've got clients everywhere. Um, and I can even record sessions for people. They don't even need to do them live. That's, that's the beauty of it. So it's, it's so personal and private. And I have been through, like I say, I had a lot to heal from, um, from my past. And I did do lots of traditional therapies. I tried other things that were supposedly kind of gentle, but in the 80s um, and 90s, the programs are out there were really really still making you bring up your feelings super super mm -hmm. strongly and like mm -hmm. I would take a week to recover you know after these things and you know you'd feel like you made some progress you think of course I've made progress because you know I'm I'm exhausted I must have healed this but um the beauty of what I'm doing now and what I experienced for myself was I just didn't have that kind of after um that you know feeling like I don't know. <laughs> it just feels good afterwards mm -hmm. rather than feeling so draining. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I don't have time to be drained and, and tired. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. And on that. that note, I think it's so crucial. Um, you know, I did a session, we did an impact entrepreneur interview with a couple of coaches. I did one with Sarah Noble um, mm -hmm. and I did one with, with Anna Squelch as well. Both of them health coaches. Mm -hmm. And we talked about self care. And I think part of self care mm -hmm. is actually you know, not just drinking your smoothie and, and going for the jog, but like de heal, healing and dealing, you know, with mm -hmm. things in your past, which obviously isn't always easy, but like I'm 45 and I've got friends that probably still haven't, you know, they've just kind of done the blind eye or maybe yeah. they've done talk therapy. So they think yeah. it's work, but yeah. it trickles yeah. down right to your marriage and it yeah. trickles down to your 
kids. And so those are things that I care a lot about too. So, I mean, I'm huge on personal development. I've done tons mm -hmm. of personal development. I've spent lots of money and lots of time and it's very well spent mm -hmm. um, on personal development so that I could grow as a speaker, a business person, whatever, a mother, but also it really goes into your, you know, your personal life. So yeah. I guess what I'm saying is this, this takes us back, doesn't it? So when those people become parents and start feeding into the, or tuning in to the yeah. first thousand years of their babies, yeah, they got to have healed their own past, right? That's right. That's right. And you know, my hope is, you know, I've, I've, my, my audience has largely been women who are already mothers and I've just enrolled my first pregnant woman and technically she's a mother. Um, she hasn't birthed her first baby yet and I've just enrolled her into my program and I'm so excited for her. And I really want, you know, it's like sometimes we don't know we need to do some work until we're feeling some pain. And then we go, oh, feeling the pain, better do the work, you know. Um, but if we, if we could learn how much my story impacts my children's story, um, then I think all of us would be like, okay, I'll, I'll sort it. I'll sort it out before I even get pregnant. I mean, that would be my ideal world is that we all mm. just sort it out before we ever get pregnant. And I see some people doing that. Um, it's just harder. It's harder for people to recognize. And, and of course, what happens is, like I say, that subconscious brain is holding all these memories in there. And so sometimes, even if you've done all this work before you had your baby, they come along and they trigger something. And it could be a very conscious memory, but it could just be something you're holding on to from the past in your subconscious and you react and you don't know why. Um, you know, my husband is really doesn't like it when my kids cry. Um, you know, it really triggers him. And for him to really look at that and discover what's so triggering about my child crying and, you know, that's the kind of thing is we, we just don't even realize why, uh, you know, I, I note the language people use when they talk about their children and they'll say, oh, they're so greedy or, you know, they're so lazy. Um, it's really, really interesting to see those judgments that are coming up, but really that's just our, our subconscious reaction to their behavior. You know, they're, they're just behaving. They're just going through their life. And then, and we're projecting our own internal stuff kind of onto onto them, our own judgments, probably of ourselves. <laughs> I love that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm so fascinated with language as well. So yeah, I totally oh, yeah. agree. Oh, my other, my fourth child is being so sneaky and coming into the room when I can't, my, my dog, when I, she normally is not allowed in this room. <laughs> um, I would love to, since we've been talking about the work you do, can you just mention to people, how can they find you and follow you to learn more or to, to, to join you um, for, to get some help for their, their own healing journey? How can they find you? Yep. So, hey, I'm, I'm all over Facebook. You can um, have my, just come into my Facebook group as well. If you are a mother or someone who's going to be a mother soon, we've got a beautiful online community that's totally free. Um, people that are really dedicated to all of this. Um, but otherwise, I would love for people to, you know, you can even just book in a free little call with me if something's triggered in here and you just want to have a chat, like, what, what do you actually do? And, and are you the person for me? Um, we can just book in a little quick call and, and have a chat. Great. So what's the name of your group then? It's the Connection Centered Parenting Community. Yay. Okay. What I'll do you guys is I'll come back to Facebook live. And when I do the zoom post, I will pop the details there as oh, well. Cool. Um, hey, before we wrap things up, I didn't give you warning on this, but I usually ask people mm -hmm. uh, because we're impact entrepreneurs, we're people mm -hmm. that want to have a more collaborations for a more positive impact on the world is a specific charity or cause that you just want to shine the light on or do a little shout out to for people listening. Yes, yes, yes. The Taranaki retreat here in New Plymouth um, kind of has my heart and soul and they are doing work, you know, they specifically started for, for people who were suicidal or really at the, the end of the rope sort of thing. Um, and they're also wanting to get into more prevention and mm. which is really, of course, where I come in is, um, and I mean, Jamie that runs Taranaki Retreat is the most beautiful beautiful man um just love it so yeah big shout out to them 
Yay. Amazing. I think a road trip will be coming up this year. I know that you and I connected last year and I really wanted to come down there yeah. and I would love to help, um, in some way mm -hmm. donating something. And I, you know what I think it might be, I don't know if this will be helpful, but I am an advocate for, or an ambassador for the rocket boards. I don't know if you've seen those wooden yes. boards. Yeah. Um, and they're really good, not just for like your core and your exercise, but also for mental health and even for kids and things with anxiety, you know, just rocking. Yep. So I don't, I don't know. I thought that might be, if it would be well received, for example, that could be, mm. that could be something for me. So anyway, thank you for doing a little shout out for them. I will also put the link below to that. Yeah. And any final words before we wrap up? Gosh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I could talk about this and talk to you for, you know, another hour or two, but <laughs> I know no one wants to listen quite that long. So I want to know when your book is coming out. Oh, yeah. So I'm collaborating in a book. Um, and I can't really say for sure, but, you know, it won't be long. It won't be long. <laughs> Maybe before the end of the year. We haven't yet determined. All right. Well, we'll be waiting. Watch this space. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Anne Cullen, for joining us today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Please do comment below with your thoughts around healing your childhood, the importance of the first 1,000 days. Um, I think this is amazing work you're doing. And for me, you know, I love the stuff that's proactive. I love the stuff that sets the foundation and is not just bottom of the cliff stuff. So thank you so much for everything that you've done to get to this point in your life, you know, and all the things you've been through, to, you know, and all the people you can help. Um, I just want to help by shining the light on you and helping so that other people know this is a thing. Like they don't just have to go to a counselor or like tell their friends the, the, the same story a thousand times. Mm -hmm. They can actually heal their own journey so that they can create an amazing thousand days and more for their family yeah. as well. That's what it's all about. It's all, yeah. Thank you, Anne. All right, see you guys. Thanks so much.